parabens are the most widely used preservative in cosmetic products. But they have been coming in for some controversy in recent years. Although the industry regulatory bodies maintain that the levels at which parabens are used are safe, some manufacturers are now offering products free from the ingredient. Parabens are a group of preservative materials that uh, are nature identical, so we actually find very similar molecules in nature. Um, and they unfortunately have got a rather a bad press over the last few years. Um, many debates have gone on between different sides of the argument about whether there are, is a problem with parabens or not, and this is something we will debate um, at least briefly in the workshop at In Cosmetics. Dean Godfrey from S Black says there's no scientific basis for the concern and manufacturers shouldn't be turning their back on parabens. Well, there have been a couple of studies um, by different groups of researchers that have claimed, made claims for uh, adverse effects or potential adverse effects. Um, the first one was in 1998 where a group of workers found that uh, specifically butyl paraben was um, estrogenic. And estrogen uh, has been linked to cancer and so some people are claiming that there is a link between parabens and cancer but that actually is not proven and uh, the, the, the study actually determined that butyl paraben was the most potent estrogenic uh, compound amongst the parabens and even that was 100,000 times weaker than estradiol which is a, a natural estrogen. Luckily there are many different materials out there that can be called preservatives um, or things that actually keep your product from going off if you don't want to actually call them a preservative. And we have to be clear that in Europe, uh, preservatives are very closely defined by a list of approved materials. So um, there are many different formulation approaches, shall we call it, um, to doing something that doesn't include par a paraben. For formulators and product developers looking for alternatives, help is very much at hand. In the European Union specifically, there's a cosmetics directive that has a positive list of preservatives. And uh, according to the directive, only preservatives on that list can be used. But as there are other compounds that have antimicrobial activity, um, but perform other functions, they can also be used in the guise of their other function. But if there is a compound that only has antimicrobial activity but no other function and it is not listed on Annex 6 of the Cosmetics Directive, it shouldn't be used. There is another formulation approach where you make your product so-called self-preserving or requiring no added preservative material. Um, this can actually be utilising the antimicrobial properties inherent in things that maybe are described as perfumes, um, they may be moisturisers that happen to also have antimicrobial properties. So you, in theory, put them in there for other reasons, but actually they, the sum total of the whole formulation is that it self-preserves, that it doesn't need something else added. It's a tricky formulation approach, and some people struggle with it, but there are ways of doing it. In spite of the adverse publicity, parabens remain among the most cost-effective preservatives in cosmetic applications. However, there are options. There have always been alternatives to parabens. They weren't the original preservative. Um, in fact, formaldehyde was the original preservative in many cosmetics. And over the years, more and more alternatives have been um, developed. And uh, there has always been, in, certainly in the last 30 or 40 years, there's been a wealth of alternatives. Up until a few years ago, I think anything that was not one of our conventional preservatives was probably struggling to really make an impact on the market because of this problem of efficacy. It might work in one product, but not in another. Um, but actually, times are moving ahead very fast, and there are some very interesting materials being launched, um, probably some of them at the In Cosmetic show, that actually do show very good results in challenge tests and are actually starting to filter onto products on the market so actually the future does look very interesting.